Good morning. I'd like to welcome you back to our Friday edition of our Anchored in the Word Morning Reflection. And as I mentioned yesterday, this is a bonus episode, and we are looking at 1 Samuel chapter 25 this morning. And so, uh, great passage of Scripture. I dealt with this on a Sunday night, and this is going to be a very condensed version of that, the, of that uh, passage of Scripture. And so, if you like something that's a little bit fuller, uh, look for our Sunday night that we had a couple weeks ago. And uh, you'll hear a fuller explanation of this passage. But what I'd like to do is ask you to take your Bibles. Let's turn together to 1 Samuel chapter 25. And we're going to look at David's impulsive response and how gracious God was to him in that situation. Here's what the text says. And Samuel died, and all the Israelites were gathered together and lamented him, and buried him in his house at Ramah. And David arose and went into the wilderness of Paran. And there was a man of Maon whose possessions were in Carmel. The man was very great. He had 3,000 sheep and 1,000 goats, and he was shearing his sheep in Carmel. Now the name of the man was Nabal, and the name of his wife, Abigail. And she was a woman of good understanding and of a beautiful countenance. But the man was churlish and evil in all his doings, and he was of the house of Caleb. Now rather than working piece by piece through this passage of Scripture, I'm going to give you a very general blow by blow of what this storyline is, what took place in David's life. The first thing that I would mention is that in this passage of scripture, we see that David is going to show kindness to Nabal. And the way that he's going to do it is by making sure that Nabal's sheep shearers who were taking care of the sheep, one of the most vulnerable times for these shearers, that they were protected and that no one harmed them, including David's own men. Then after David's done this, he sends sends some men to go to Nabal and to just let them know what they've done. And there's a bit of an expectation that Nabal is going to show some kind of kindness back to David. And this would have been a a cultural expectation. What David is doing is not weird or strange at the time that he's living. But when Nabal speaks to these young men that David has sent, uh, Nabal is arrogant and he's harsh. And he sends these men back to David having insulted them. And so how does David respond? David is furious, and his intention is to kill every single man in the household of Nabal because he is so angry. And so when we look at this passage, we see David's irrational response, and Abigail, the wife of Nabal, finds out about what David is about to do, and she wisely and quickly intervenes. She gathers together goods. She brings them to David, and she appeals to David And what does David do? He spares Nabal's life. He spares the life of all the people there that he intended to go and to kill. And this is because of God's gracious intervention. God was sparing David from acting in anger and killing innocent people and ultimately leaving him with this terrible blot before he even becomes the king of Israel. And so that's the storyline. So the question is, well, what are some of the truths that we find as we dig into this passage of Scripture? The first truth that I want to mention that I think is so very important is that sometimes we unwisely gloss over the tragic flaws of people that God has used in mighty ways. David would be an example of this. We look at at the passage before in 1 Samuel 24, and what do we see? An incredible example of David being restrained and not taking matters into his own hands and not taking vengeance. We think of the story of David and Goliath, and we see that David has this intense Uh, a love for God and a zeal for God, and he's not afraid to go to fight against the giant. And we look at those passages, and what we see is a great man, a great young man. But this passage shows another side to David. Why is that? Because David is a sinner like anybody else. And the Bible speaks very openly and very transparently about both people's strengths and weaknesses, and we should make sure that we provide the proper balance here. Secondly, These events were a pivotal season in David's life and his ascent to the throne. And if God had not intervened the way that he did at this moment, as David is really getting ready to become the king uh, in the very near future, this would have been a major blot on David's reputation. Had God not intervened for his good, this would have been the greatest injustice that David inflicted in his life. Now, we could argue, well, what about uh, the story of Bathsheba, and him killing Uriah and all those things, obviously this is a great injustice as well. But the volume of people that David would have killed who were innocent would have been massive. 
And God spared him from this by Abigail's timely intervention. And so Abigail's timely intervention is an example of how human wisdom and God's gracious providence can work hand in hand. So these are a couple of truths that I want us to ponder as we think about it. The passage teaches those things. But what it teaches more than anything else is the fact that there's a greater king that we need than David. A king that will never fail us. A king, a king that is faithful and will always be measured. He is righteous. He is just. He is good. He is holy. And so that's what this passage of scripture teaches us. Well, the question is, well, how do we apply the text in front of us? Let me give you some thoughts to think about as we go into the weekend. The first is this. We must be extremely vigilant during transitional periods in our life. Here, David is a young man. He's about to ascend to the throne. Samuel has died. And this is a time where David gets restless. And when David is restless, he responds in a way that is potentially very shameful. And the fact is we can find ourselves doing similar things. We need to be cautious during these transitional periods of our life that we do not allow ourselves to respond impulsively and rashly. We cannot allow our strengths and past successes to become areas of overconfidence. David was a man who showed tremendous restraint in 1 Samuel 24. Well, guess what? 1 Samuel 25, he's like a different person. What's the point? Just because you've done the right thing in the past doesn't mean you will always do the right thing. We've got to stay vigilant, even in the areas where we apparently are the strongest. God's meticulous care for our good comes through practical, decisive action. God works through ordinary means, and this text reveals that. I also want to talk about what we can learn from Abigail's timely human response. She was proactive. When there's a situation, she moves very quickly. She acknowledged the wrong specifically. And Abigail had not wronged David and his men. It was her husband, but she called it out. She spoke transparently and honestly about it. She attempted to make the matter right as much as possible. And so she brought the goods that should have been sent by Nabal earlier. And she asked for forgiveness and grace. So these are the things that we see from Abigail. And these are a great example to us when we have wronged someone and when we are appealing for them to forgive and to show mercy. What can we learn from David's response? We can learn some things too. Well, his response was violent and inappropriate. But when he responded the wrong way, he listened when he was confronted. And so even though he was proud initially, he backed down. Like, uh, like the scriptures say in Proverbs, it says that a just man fall, uh, falls seven times, but he what? He rises up again. But the wicked fall and are punished. So even though David had stumbled, David got back up. Even though David responded in anger and in pride, David humbled himself. He listened. He listened even though he was angry. He acknowledged God had the right rather than him to be the judge in this situation. And he, he backed down. He changed the course. And he was grateful for God's merciful intervention. And he articulated that in this passage. Two more important reminders I want to give you before we think about one last thing. The first is this. All of our lives are testimonies of God's mercy and grace and should always be viewed that way. No matter what you accomplish in life, you accomplish nothing but by the grace of God. No matter what good decisions you've made, you did not make them had it not, you would not have made them had it not been for the gracious work of God in your life. And so when we think about David, David is a testimony to the mercy and the grace of God. And we need to remember that the same is true in our lives. And secondly, and this is the last thing I want you to think going into the weekend, you cannot allow yourself to take your eyes off of Christ. David is not the primary example. Abigail is not the primary example. The Lord Jesus is. The fact is, when David does what is right, he's only doing right because the grace of God has worked in him. When Abigail moves quickly and wisely, it's because of God's providence at work in that situation. And so when we see David's failure, it reminds us to look past David to someone who is far greater, a king who will never let us down, a king who will rule and reign in righteousness forever forever the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I want to remind you, have a wonderful weekend and keep your eyes on the Lord Jesus Christ. May he be your strength and your sustenance and your joy. Have a blessed weekend. Lord willing, we'll see many of you on Sunday. Bye now.